Hey folks, now this month, of course, in the mailbag, we've got the My Aquarium box, but we've also got a few products in and around UV sterilizers. That's all coming up right before this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and thank you for joining me for the September mailbag. I, uh, I asked folks, folks in the last video, uh, did they enjoy the mailbag videos? Uh, was that something that interests them? And I got an overwhelming response that people wanted to see more of it. So, but I'd like it to be a little bit more than, uh, hey, I just opened a bunch of stuff in the mail and let's just look at it. And sometimes it, it'll have to be that way. Just because I've got different projects, you know, going at the same time. But other times, like this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my focus in and around like one type of product. And uh, those products, for the most part, haven't arrived. I've had an in-tank UV sterilizer uh, for many, many years. I've used it just a few times for some specific things. We'll talk about all that, as well as uh, the different options that are available, including what I just showed you in a few minutes. The reality is it's like Friday afternoon and they haven't arrived. They'll probably arrive at some point while I'm filming this, but... So with that in mind, I thought maybe we'd start here. Yes, folks, here we have the September My Aquarium Box and my implement of destruction this month is uh, the skull that I used in the, what was that called? The crime scene tank. That's right, the crime scene tank. It's just a little plastic skull. You can actually get these at PetSmart. And uh, once it's got some algae on it, it actually looks pretty creepy and realistic. So, you know, we got Halloween coming up. Think about Mr. Plastic Skull. Also a little known fact about plastic skulls and that sort of thing is they're great for opening boxes. All right. That thing. I knew him, Horatio. A man of infinite wit and jest. All right, so let's get right into the box. Oops. Looks like I've got a little present for my mic, my mic fairy. <laughs> Mike, the packer of my box, likes to leave me. Sometimes he'll give me like a super secret message and a and a, a tool. <laughs> Looks like I've gotten next month's implement of destruction for my aquarium box. So the little Stanley Redwood saw. Look at that. Thank you, Mike. I for sure will use this in the very next box. I'll just keep it in my skull here. There we go. And right here on top we have we've got a number of coupons. Very nice. We've got a little information about the aquatic experience and this month's scorecard. Now of course the scorecard will list all the products and the approximate value. Then we've got uh, all the people, all the sponsors for this right here at the bottom. Okay, let's take a look right on top here. We've got a nylon filter bag. That usually means we're gonna get a little bit of biological media in here somewhere. Uh, but these are really super handy. And what I end up using these for the most is uh, I put them over the intake of my canister filters to keep the shrimp out. And uh, they seem to be pretty effective. It's not a super stealthy way to, to, to do that, but it does work. And it looks like we've got another small sample of super glue gel. And that is really, really handy for aquascaping. And of course the gel type is the best of the super glues to use. We've got some My Aquarium Box food. This is the small fish formula, which is nice since I have quite a few small fish. And what's this? Whoop. Oh wow, okay. It's like a, it's one of those bamboo caves, but it's attached to a piece of ceramic, so it just like will instantly sink. How neat. Well, that's nice and simple and pretty. I'm surprised too. I mean, it's real simple, but that would look good just sitting there. Ooh, I might have to put this in place of that tiki that's in the, the shrimp cage. I don't know yet. And a pump. <laughs> That's what it says. All right in the front. A pump. Silent aquarium pump. Let's see. 
Ooh. Yeah, this looks to be an air pump. And it comes with some hose and a bubbling stone. And the pump itself, which is fairly small and does have a suction cup. Wow. That's pretty cool. Little A pump. And what's this? Hey. Now, I was expecting this to be biological media. I try not to read the scorecard before I start pulling stuff out. Yeah, I just like the surprise. It's a hang on the back breeding box. So what this is, is a little, uh, it's like a little jail cell or a maternity ward or however you'd like to think about it. Um, this is a little plastic, oh, another box to open. Next week for the saw, next week. All right, let's take a look inside of this breeding box because this is kind of cool. Okay, we've got a little lid of some sort. Marina, of course, is uh, another brand owned by Hagen, which also owns Fluval, so it's like Walmart Fluval. All right. <clears throat> let's see what we got here. And that's not an insult at all, by the way, to Walmart, necessarily. It's funny, uh, if you get into products and product brands, there's like, a lot of these companies, they actually go by several brand names. It's uh, never just one, unless they're a smaller company. You know, the bigger ones, they can afford to kind of change a few things, change the way things are packaged even, make really minor changes to the product itself, and then just uh, sell it for more money or less money. All right, ooh, that's kind of cool. All right, it looks like a hang on the back filter. Just looking at it here. What all is going on? Oh, uh, you know what? This goes great with the pump, I bet. I guess I could look at the instructions. All right, it's got picture instructions, that's good. So I don't have to try to read it. I'm not gonna do that. Wow, so this thing actually has quite a few little bits to it. I'm surprised. <clears throat> Quite a few little small parts here and there. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this stuff over here. And we're just gonna assemble this with magic. Mega! Oh, wow. Wow, that's a neat little kit. Look at that. Well, this is it, of course, all assembled or mega unboxed depending on your point of view. But uh, this is what it looks like. It looks like a small hang on the back filter. Uh, it's got, it's air driven. So this hose goes out. It's got a little regulator here to the, change the flow if you want to make this a little bit faster flow or a little bit slower. Uh, but you can put a fish in here. Maybe it's a new fish that you're wanting to acclimate, you know, slowly acclimate to the water. Or perhaps it's a, a a live bear that you know has babies or some other fish that's, that's pregnant and you want to separate it out. I think the idea is that it has the babies. The babies kind of instinctively run to the bottom. They get under this grate and then the parent can't eat them. At least that's the idea for things like that. And that's a really neat kit, especially when you uh, add in the air pump that you got for this too. So you've got a nice little breeding box kit. It could be a breeding box. You could use it for acclimation. Uh, maybe you want to separate a fish that's new and just kind of get it used to the water. Uh, really, really used to the water before you actually send it out into the main tank. Really, really neat little thing to have. That'll definitely come in handy. And there you have it, folks. The September My Aquarium Box. Now, although they didn't come in the mail, I did get some new acquisitions this week in regards to fish. I wanted to get a few more fish for the 20 gallons, so I've got some more Ember Tetras. So now there's a, probably about 11 or 12 of those in the school. I also got six pygmy quarry cats, which are really, really cute little tiny, tiny quarry cat. I also picked up some peacock gudgeon. Uh, peacock gudgeon, of course, are the really, really neat fish that, that I have inside the steampunk tank. And I've had those fish inside the steampunk tanks literally since the weekend of the show. Uh, Rachel brought them to me, I plopped them in the tank, and that's where they've been ever since. Even on the ride home, basically, they were still in that aquarium. That aquarium hasn't changed a whole lot, uh, maybe a little bit here and there, but not a whole lot since the day I set it up at the show. But what I'd like to do is take the peacock gudgeons that have been living happily inside of there, maybe add them to the 20 gallon. So that would give me a total of like 
four or five Peacock Gudgeons. I know for sure there's three inside the Steampunk tank, so that'll be cool. I'd like to bring them over and uh, put them in the 20 gallon and just kind of let them live in that for a while. Then what I kind of like to do is redo some aspects of the, the Steampunk tank as far as like the aquascape and the interior of it. I'm never really going to be able to grow plants there, so it'd be kind of uh, fun to do something else inside of there. But that's just yet another project I want to revisit. But knowing ahead of time that I might be bringing some peacock gudgeons over from there to there, I went ahead and got some new ones that can kind of get familiar with the environment and, and be all set because they can be kind of combative with one another. Really, really beautiful fish, though. I love peacocks. I love those gudgeons! Oh, and those pygmy quarry cats are so cute, man. They really love to run around. They're very active little fish. I, I think they're neat. I actually got approached by a light company and what I'm thinking about doing is taking down the little homemade thing I made on the back of the Into the Woods tank and replacing it with another product. I still want to find out a little bit more about it, but that might be in the next month's mailbag. I don't know how long it will take them to get it to me or whatever, but it, uh, it was a really cool idea. So I, I want to know a little bit more about it, but uh, so far I'm sold. It sounds pretty cool. So Billy brought over a couple of his fish, as you might have remember from the tour of his fish room, which was insanely popular. People really liked your fish room. Thanks, guys. And um, he brought over a couple of his fish. Uh, what did you bring me? I brought you my electric blue cars out of my 60-gallon Moss Mountain tank. Goofus and Doofus. Goofus and Doofus. Right. They needed to get home, and I figured this was probably the best place to bring them. Well, thank you. Uh, I'll do my best to take care of them. You guys will see them here uh, swimming around. They're getting... They're getting acclimated to their new home, but I think that they'll do good in here, hopefully. They seem to be pretty happy so far. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Billy. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. If you got more fish, you know, you can bring them by. Let's see what happens. <laughs> now, although my UV sterilizers have not arrived yet, I'd like to start off with the one that I have. I've, I've actually had a couple. The first one I had was an inline UV sterilizer that came off a canister filter and went around and back into the 55. Unfortunately, that, that canister filter that was plugged in was a really old used one and I had a problem with it. It actually leaked and that whole system got kind of pulled apart and uh, I didn't really ever see the full effects of that. Like I only had it running for a little while and uh, that's before I really kind of understood what they were for. Now for the most part, a well-kept planet tank probably is not going to need a UV sterilizer, especially not to run all the time, but they are immensely helpful if you get into sort of pest situations like Ick. But what a UV sterilizer does is, that, is it literally sterilizes in that it keeps an organism from reproducing and what it and it just sterilizes everything that's floating around in the water. Anything that's exposed to that UV light will suddenly become non-reproductive. -re that gets things like ick and other things that are floating around in their vulnerable stage, uh, that the only stage where really you can kill those things. Uh, it gets those sterilizes them, keeps them from reproducing, and the problem gradually grows away as they die out. It also does the same thing to algae, so it can keep algae at bay. Uh, so people that keep their aquariums maybe in a window where it gets full light, a lot of storefronts will have an aquarium in full light. Uh, a lot of them will run stuff like this to kind of help keep the algae uh, toned down as much as possible. They are kind of an emergency item, and that's why I've only, uh, in the past several years, I've only owned this one. And, but it's kind of huge. If you have a really small aquarium, maybe an ick, you have an ick break or, or something happens that makes you want to put this in there, it is way too big. I've actually, I have had this in an eight gallon tank before. <laughs> this is only a nine watt light. I think it's really only meant for maybe a 30 gallon or so. And I have, I threw the box away a long time ago, so I'm not too sure of the specs. I know it's a nine watt light. You can tell it's on. It's got like a little thing here to tell you that the light's still on. And it's got a pump built into it, so it's going to pump water through and pass this light. I would not use, try to use this as a, like a regular box filter, of course. Um, it's just not meant for that. So my main go-to for years has always been this thing, no matter if it's a 30-gallon or, you know, a 5-gallon. But the truth is I haven't had a tremendous amount of problems. Like, I've never really used one of these to fight algae before, although I'm kind of intrigued by the idea. I wonder, if I could, if, wonder how it would work in some scenarios. All right, so... Here are two other examples of ultraviolet filters or UV filters. Now all of these work in kind of the same principle of somehow or another water is passed over the light and as the water passes over it the light affects the, the contents of the water. So in cases of like this one and I think probably this one there's an internal filter that's sucking the water in and kind of pushing it past the light 
And then other times, like in the inline UV filter, like coming off a canister filter, just one built into the hose, or like this one that lets the water pass over it by just being attached to the filter in another way. This is a real different one. So that's kind of the story with UV filters in general. Uh, there's a lot of different wattages. Uh, this, uh, I believe, is the 9 watt. I don't remember what the wattage is on this small one here. Neither of these were very expensive. Uh, there are more expensive versions of these things that you can get and bigger versions of these that you can get. I was thinking of adding something small inside my sump. I already have uh, a small pump that's pumping water into the extra reservoir and then it just kind of pours back into the primary uh, pump out area in the sump. And I thought this might be kind of a neat way to uh, to pump the water through. I could just pump the water through and while I'm at it, hit it with the UV sterilizer. Just to keep things a little extra clean and uh, make sure there's no pathogens or anything like that floating around in there. Or I can simply put this in the sump and if something ever arises, I'll have it ready to go. I can just turn it on and, uh, and use it right then. This one's quite different too in that it fits on a hang on the back filter. It kind of just fits onto the front that where the water pours out of your hang in the back filter. In fact, let's just open it up and take a quick look. All right. It says to avoid shorting out that this little box should never be on top of the tank. It needs to be kind of away from the tank with a drip loop or or have it set up so the water won't get into here at all. It looks like inside of there, there's kind of like this little chamber, so the water would kind of, gravity would feed it in. It looks like a lot of it might just flow over the top, but some of it's gonna go into here and then out the side. And uh, inside there, it's gonna be bombarded with UV radiation, UV light. I was wondering if this could go below the water line. I'm actually not sure on that whether or not this is supposed to or not. I would think so. You would think all of this part, at least, should be underwater. I don't like where the cable comes out, because it comes out right in the front, so that means it's going to be like, like that when you try to put it in your tank. Huh. Well, that's kind of interesting. I'll read the instructions and uh, maybe try to implement this on a small tank someplace. Let's see what that's like. We'll put that aside. But that's kind of a passive thing. No pump on it, just the just the plug. Uh, there's a light bulb inside of here. I'm not sure how you'd get it apart to replace the light bulb. But then again, this isn't very expensive either. Uh, it looks like there's one screw, so maybe you could replace the light bulb if you wanted to. Okay, and on to this one, which I'm hoping is just like a smaller version of this thing that I've had for years. Uh, it is made by the Green Killing Machine. Well, that's what they call it anyway. Huh. Comes kind of sealed up in this little package. Interesting. This is obviously the pump. So water gets sucked into here, goes around the UV light, and comes out here and is expelled. That's what I'm guessing anyway. And it's got this thing here so you can sort of redirect the water to where you want it to go. I bet. I imagine. All right, so this has got two cables, but it looks like they plug in, like this plugs in here to this thing. Then this goes out like so. So we've got one plug going to the wall. This thing just gets suction cupped somewhere outside of the, uh, outside of the aquarium. And this gets put in there someplace. <laughs> wow. I mainly use this for medicinal purposes. I w I'm wondering though, like if I used it a little bit more regularly, would I see any significant improvement? It might be kind of neat to stick this on like the little face tank downstairs, but then I'll be adding kind of a lot to it. I, I don't know if I feel like, this might be a little intrusive on that aquarium, but I don't have a lot of hang on the back filters anymore. Uh, I'm always installing one somewhere, or this might be really cool if I modded it into something that to go onto uh, like the Fluval Flex or or maybe the uh, the spec downstairs. That'd be really cool. Maybe I could take one of those little spray bars and just attach it to there. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, I've got some stuff to play with, and uh, I, I definitely think this is pretty neat. Boy, there's a lot of cables and stuff to deal with. I'm kind of used to this one 
this is a real simple one. You know, it's got one cable, it works the motor, it works the light and everything, and it's all kind of internal. This is probably an older school light bulb though. Yeah, they have a 24 watt version of this too that looks like it's a probably just twice as long as this one. It's probably more and closer in size to the way this thing is. Pretty interesting little thing. Now, I, I've definitely seen these uh, these bulbs for sale as far as like replacement bulbs. So if it does burn out, it's not the end of the world. I wonder if it's a little easier to get into than the other one was. I don't really see a pathway to, to, to get into this thing. Actually, I think the way you replace this is probably just take this pump off and then you replace this whole unit. That might be what the replacement bulbs look like. They're all completely enclosed in there. And that might be on purpose just to keep you from uh, having an accident when you try to put your bulb back in there and uh, maybe you get some leaky electricity issues. Looks like it also came with extra sponges for this little pre-filter in here. And a silica packet, mmm, my favorite. Yeah, but those are some pretty cool UV sterilizers. Uh, there's a lot of different options out there on Amazon and eBay and uh, your local fish store. Hey guys, wasn't that nice of Billy to come by and bring me some plants and some fish? He didn't just bring me some fish, he brought me some plants too. And including this one that my new little fish are checking out. And uh, thank you so much, Billy. I really appreciate it. And folks, that's all I got for you this week, but I'll be back next week with another video. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Or like this one that's really hurt. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and thank you for joining us again for a September September mailbag. Yeah. I need him. And it looks like we've got a little small sample of super goop. <laughs> super goop. That's the duck. <laughs> Perfectly sober while I do this. <laughs>